This is the Tronxy D01, a compact Core XY 3D printer with linear rails and rigid construction. And in this roller coaster of a review, I'll show you how this machine went from producing parts like this to prints like this to very much almost catching fire. I'm going to be as balanced as possible as I can here, guys, but I'm going to be real. I'm pretty angry with this one. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Before I proceed with this review, I will skip right to the chase. This machine that was sent to me for purpose of review did not come with thermal runaway protection enabled. And an intermittent connection towards the end of my last print could have very much ended in disaster. I've been printing a fair bit on this machine and did nothing out of the ordinary to induce this failure. I came into the room the next morning and was met with a strong odor of burnt caramel, the hallmark of burning PLA, and subsequently tested and discovered that yes, indeed, no protection is in place. I'll round back to this at the end, so for now, let's discuss the rest of the machine. The D01 comes as a semi-assembled machine and only takes a few bolts to put together with quite good instructions. It has a cube print volume of 220 millimeters and a removable glass ultra base style bed. And filament feeding is through a Bowden and a geared Titan style extruder at the back. And the hot end design, while quick to heat up, leaves a lot to be desired and is quite prone to stringing and oozing. There is filament outage detection too, but I found it was somewhat unreliable and triggering randomly while filament was still in it, so I just removed it for most of my tests. Some of you might recognize this design from a recent review by Stefan over on CNC Kitchen. It's very similar in appearance to the Two Tree Sapphire Pro he checked out recently, but it's not the same machine. And although I didn't have nearly as many issues getting it up and running as he did with that printer, my experience certainly wasn't seamless here. While the mechanical design is very sound, I think Tronxy jumped the gun a bit sending this machine out to me, as all the demo files had the ultra base style heat bed set to zero or unheated, and as you guys might know, this doesn't work. Now Tronxy did tell me they updated the G code to turn the heat bed, you know, on, but that's something just to keep an eye out for. I used their skin version of Cura and sliced my own test models. The surface quality of prints of this machine were really nice, but as soon as the printer had to jump between points, it would leave these nasty strings and dags. Just check out these stringing tests I did initially, possibly the worst I've ever seen. And because the Bowden design is somewhat similar to the Ender 3, I tried those settings and still experienced issues. So I thought perhaps a better cooling fan and Capricorn PTFE could be the solution. This is where I discovered that the hot end design is in fact the kind where the nozzle butts up against the PTFE versus the PTFE going right into the nozzle. So couple that with the huge Bowden and well, there's no two ways about it. The prints sucked. Once again, the surface quality was lovely, but the stringing was just terrible. Any movements over a few centimeters would leave really obvious dribbles, leaving only one option cranking retraction up a lot. This is a print done with three millimeter retraction. This is with eight and this is with 20. Yeah, I went there, but hey, look, no more stringing. In the end, I found that 12 millimeters and a very slow 40 millimeters per second worked well enough for most circumstances. Remember, retraction doesn't actually magically suck molten plastic back into the hot end. If anything, I'm just inducing a delay so the ooze is within the part, not during travels. I would very much consider throwing the whole hot end assembly away and using something better as the mechanical design beyond that is actually pretty sound. It's pretty clear that this isn't an isolated issue either, considering it's visible on their own promotional video, they just clean it off for the final shot, but you can't fool me. But this is where this review would have ended. A few slicer tweaks and you can get really decent prints off a solidly built machine with linear rails. What's not to like? But that's if this had not happened. You see, the hot end uses this connector assembly to wire up heater cartridge, thermistor, and cooling fans. And Tronxy has thankfully tripled up the wires for the heater cartridge to avoid them overheating due to too much current. But it seems that this plug can wiggle a little over time, and that just so happened to wiggle the thermistor open circuit at the end of this print. When this occurs, the printer reads a ridiculous negative number, and the machine will naturally try to head back to temperature, 
which is when you hit an issue known as thermal runaway. The machine can literally melt itself down trying to hit this magic number when it can't and perhaps the thermistor could come loose and read an ambient temperature of the room, the same failure will occur. This very failure has set machines on fire and burnt people's sheds down. There is a safety feature built into Marlin and other firmware called Thermal Runaway Protection, which helps detect if this may be occurring and shut the machine down for safety. This did not occur here. The printer clearly just kept going, getting hotter and hotter, till thankfully the throughput of the PLA was kind of keeping the temp down, and then the print finished. But you can see where the failure occurred. It got hotter and hotter till it was literally spitting out burnt PLA goop, and then thankfully the print completed and it just shut it off. But if that had not happened, we might have had a catastrophic failure here. I have tested so many 3D printers over the years, I've honestly lost count. Now, I am sure many of those that I've tested in the past did not have thermal runaway protection enabled, but they had a better electrical design that it meant it wasn't an issue during my testing or it hid it from being an issue at least. And I only recently congratulated ANET for implementing thermal runaway protection in their ANET A8 Plus when for years the A8 with stock firmware was a ticking time bomb. And the Sidewinder X1 I just tested recently did have cable connector issues, but when it did, thermal runaway protection was triggered right away. It's the end of 2019. This feature isn't new, and I'm honestly sickened at what this could do to someone. This machine lives in my garage. A meltdown would be bad for me, but not life-threatening. But a lot of people use their printers in their bedrooms or their living rooms. There is literally no excuse. Moving forwards, I will be updating my review terms to be even more aggressive than just the outline that I'll be presenting in unbiased review. I will be testing thermal runaway protection first. The safe way to test it, by the way, is to disconnect the heater cartridge from the main board. That way it tries to heat up, but nothing actually heats. And if the thermal runaway protection is in place, the machine will error out after a short period of time and shut down. If this does not happen, I will both refuse the review and publicly make it known that the issue exists on that specific machine. This machine, once I tweaked settings, was one of the few to ever clear 0.15 millimeter gaps in my new clearance test. I was very ready to give it a positive review, but firmware is among one of the simplest things to change. And if this was any sort of normal consumer product sold here in Australia, it would be grounds for a total recall if an issue like this was discovered. So I truly hope Tronxy fixes this ASAP and understands just how unacceptable it is not having thermal runaway protection enabled. It really just is not okay. That's it. Look, I'll put a link in the video description of this machine, but please keep in mind that it did not have thermal runaway protection enabled when I tested it. So if you're buying it for the mechanical test bed, you want to do some mods and upgrades and tweaks, go for it. It's a good machine for that. But until they update the firmware, I can't recommend it wholeheartedly as in its stock form. So that's going to do it, guys. Thanks for watching. And if you did enjoy this video, maybe consider subscribing because I do really appreciate it. Catch you later. Bye.